Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so just to give you a little background, a very long time ago, so we're talking over 2,000 years ago, the Greek philosopher Pythagoras made a pretty amazing discovery about right triangles. And the discovery was when a triangle has a right angle, so a measure of 90 degrees, and squares are made on each side, on each of the three sides of the triangle. So it's almost like if I were to take this picture from our notes and like extend each side of the triangle to create squares. I'm going to erase this in a minute because I know this drawing is terrible, but bear with me here. So if I were to extend each side to create squares, then the biggest square has the exact same area as the other two squares put together. So for instance, in our picture, the area um, for square A and the area for square B added together would be the same as the area for square C. Um, so this was pretty interesting at the time, obviously. I mean, we're talking over 2,000 years ago this discovery was made. Um, now, why was this so important? Or really, why is this theorem important to us? Well, it's important because it's used to find missing sides of a right triangle when the other two sides are known. Now, again, the most important thing here is this only applies to right triangles. It, do, it does not apply to all triangles. So if you don't have a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem cannot be used. So just to go over our notes a little bit, every right triangle has two sides called lengths, which intersect to form a right angle. So if you're looking at our triangle on our notes, you can see leg A and leg B. And when they intersect, they form this right angle. The side across from the right angle, this is called the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So for Pythagoras, the theorem that he came up with is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So the length of one of the legs squared plus the length of the other leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So let's talk a little bit about how to identify a leg versus the hypotenuse. So again, the legs of a right triangle intersect to form a right angle. Now, when we label one through six, A and B can kind of can be intermixed, if you will. Um, so if you say one of the legs is A, but I label it B, it's okay. As long as we understand that it's a leg, I'm okay with us um, not necessarily being on the same page, whether it's A or B. I will typically take the shortest side or the shortest leg, and I will label that A. However, if you label it B, that's okay, as long as we know what is a leg versus the hypotenuse. So for example, in number one, remember our two legs, which I'm gonna label in blue, make a right angle. So this side here, I'm gonna label A, and this side here, I'm gonna label B. Notice how these two sides together create a right angle. Now across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse, which is C. So C is always going to represent our hypotenuse, and A and B are always going to represent legs of the triangle, okay? All right, so looking at B, again, if I'm going to label these legs versus a hypotenuse, I'm going to label, and it doesn't matter which way you put A or B, I'm going to say this side is A. This side is B. These are my legs because together they create a right, tri or a right angle. 
And across from that right angle is always our hypotenuse, C. Looking at number three, again, our legs are always going to create a 90 degree angle. I'm going to label this side A, this side B. Those are my two, oh, that's kind of a funky way of making B, hang on. I'm, there we go. And then across from our right angle, so always directly across from it, is our hypotenuse C. So C is always going to be the longest side of our triangle. Looking down at number four, now we give you some actual measurements of each side. So again, the two shorter sides, or the two sides that create a right angle, these are our legs. So I'm going to label the side that says 5 meters, I'm going to label that A. 12 meters is B. And our hypotenuse, which is always the longest side, is C. Looking at number 5, our two legs, A and B, create a right angle. And across from the right angle, our longest side is C, our hypotenuse. Last but not least on this page, again, our two legs create a right angle. And across from that right angle, our longest side, the hypotenuse. Okay, so this is just us getting to know again that right triangle, what represents a leg, and how do we know which side is going to be the longest side. Again, that hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. All right, so now we're actually going to be applying. The Pythagorean Theorem. So the Pythagorean Theorem again, and I'm going to write it at the top, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b represent the length of the legs of the right triangle, and c represents our hypotenuse. So if I'm taking a look at number one, we're going to find the unknown length of each triangle, and we're going to round our answers to the nearest tenth if necessary. So in number one, it looks like I have the value of each leg. You'll see that three and four create a right angle. So side, the side that's labeled three and the side that's labeled four create a right angle. That means these two sides are legs. C, which is across from our right angle, is our hypotenuse. So writing out the Pythagorean theorem again, my A, or side A, is going to be the side that has a length of 3. B is going to be the side that has a length of 4. And C squared is our hypotenuse. We don't know what that length is just yet. All right. 3 squared means 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 4 squared, which is 4 times 4. That's 16, equals C squared, which we can't quite do anything with yet. 9 plus 16 gives us 25. Now I'm just combining like terms on that left side. Now I want to find out what C is. Not C squared, but just C. So in order to get just a C on that right side, I have to undo the squared term. So here's where our knowledge of radicals comes into play. So to undo a squared term, I'm going to square root. So the square root undoes the squared term. Now I have just a C on the right side. The square root of 25, I am just going to take the positive value of that. Remember how we talked about um, when we're solving for a variable, we typically end up with two answers, a positive and a negative. In this case, because we're talking about a side length, a side length can never be negative. So we're just going to go with the positive value here. So the length of side C is 5. And again, notice how that's the longest side of that triangle. All right, let's take a look at number 2. So number 2, looking at this triangle, seeing what information we're given, notice the two side lengths that we have create a right angle. So I'm going to label this side A. I'm going to label this side B. And we're going to go ahead and find the hypotenuse, C. So using Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to take side A, which is 6 in length, plus side.
side B, which is 8 in length, and then square both of those and set them equal to C squared, the hypotenuse squared. All right, 6 squared, 6 times 6 is 36, plus 8 squared, 8 times 8 is 64, equals C squared. Combining 36 and 64, I get 100, equal to C squared. And to undo that squared term, I'm going to square root both sides. And again, I'm only going to take the positive value here since we're talking about a side length. And the square root of 100 is 10. Now let's make sure this is our hypotenuse. Is that the longest side compared to the other two? Yes, it is. All right, taking a look at number three, we have to think about what information is given to us. So side length, the side that has a length of 8, uh, notice how that side length helps create that right angle. That means that this is going to be a leg. I am going to label it A. Side B, which also helps create that right angle, we don't know. So this is a leg as well. So side B is another leg, which means 17, the side length that has a length of 17, is our hypotenuse. So to set up our equation here, I'm going to fill in the pieces that I know. I know that side A has a measure of 8. I do not know B. And I know side C has a measure of 17. Now, anytime I replace a variable with a number, I usually like to put that number in parentheses. All right, so continuing on. 8 squared, 8 times 8 is 64, plus B squared. We're going to leave that because I don't know what it is equals 17 squared, which is 289. All right, I have to get b squared all by itself on this left side. So to do that, I'm going to use my inverse operations to bring 64 to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides. And when I do, I get b squared equal to 225. All right, to undo a squared term, let's square root. And when I do that, I end up with B equal to 15. Now remember, B is a leg. It should not be longer than the hypotenuse, and in this case, it is not. All right, let's take a look at four. Number four, looking at this right triangle, it looks like I have the value of each leg. I am missing the hypotenuse, however. So plugging in. To Pythagorean theorem, 5 I'm going to label as A, 8 is going to be side B, which means 5 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. Okay, 5 squared, 5 times 5 gives us 25, plus 8 squared, which is 64, equals C squared. 25 and 64 gives us 89. Now, 89, I know for a fact, is not a perfect square, so this is going to be a decimal answer here. So taking the square root of both sides, in your calculator, you can hit second, that x squared key to bring up your square root option. Type in 89. And if I'm rounding this to the nearest tenth, like the directions told us above, the square root of 89 rounded to the nearest tenth is 9.4. And we're going to say that is approximately what C is since we had to round. All right, taking a look at number five. Again, what are the values I know? It looks like I have one leg value, which is 20, and I have the hypotenuse, which is 30. And the reason I know it's the hypotenuse again, this is directly across from the right angle. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to plug in what I know. I don't know A, but 20 is my other leg, which means 20 is B. And C, which is my hypotenuse, is 30. All right, so A squared plus 20 squared, 20 times 20 is 400, equals 30 squared, which is 900. Bringing 400 to the other side, I'm going to do that by subtraction, which means I have a squared equal to 500. To undo a squared term, I square root. 
And again, this is going to be another decimal for us. So second x squared, 500, gives us an A value of approximately, if I'm rounding to the nearest tenth, 22.4. Okay. All right, on to number six. Seeing what I have, it looks like I have the value of one leg, and I also have the value of the hypotenuse. So I'm looking for leg B. So I'm going to take A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Nine looks like it's going to represent A, since I'm missing leg B. So nine squared plus B squared equals our hypotenuse squared, which is 16. Nine squared, nine times nine gives us 81 plus b squared equals 16 times 16, which is 256. To get b squared by itself, I'm going to subtract 81 from both sides. And when I do, I'm left with b squared equal to 175. Again, this is not a perfect square, so it's going to be a decimal answer. I'm going to square root both sides to undo that squared term. And I come up with a b value that's approximately 13.2. All right, almost done with this page. All right, number seven, you notice that we have a rectangle. Now, one thing we know about a rectangle is opposite sides are congruent. So this side up here is also going to have a measure of 25. And this side over here is also going to have a measure of A. So we know that the value of the diagonal is 40, so the diagonal in this case is actually representing our hypotenuse. So if we just look at one of the right angles that makes up this, I should say one of the right triangles that makes up our rectangle, I have enough information to help me find the value of A. So A is a leg. The side with the value of 25, oops, is also a leg, so I'm going to label that B. And 40 is my hypotenuse. This is my C. So plugging into the theorem, A I don't know, B is 25, and C is 40. So 25 times 25, that gives me 625. 40 times 40 is 1,600. Getting A squared by itself, I'm going to subtract 625 from both sides. That leaves me with A squared equal to 975. That is not a perfect square, so we are going to have a decimal here too. Taking the square root of both sides. I get an A value of approximately 31.2. All right, so taking a look at number eight, you can see um, the height of this parallelogram is five. So that is given to us, which is very, very helpful because once we're given that height, we have a right triangle created. Now the legs, are A and this side here that has a value of 5. Now 8 represents the hypotenuse. So in order for us to find A, once again, we're going to plug in, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug the numbers in right away here. I'm going to plug in to the Pythagorean theorem. 5 times 5 is 25. 8 times 8 is 64. To get a squared all by itself, I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. I'm going to undo that addition. And I get a squared equal to 39. And to get just a, I'm going to square root both sides. And I get an a value of approximately 6.2. So I know I'm going a little fast here. If you do need to pause the video, try it on your own and then verify your answers, that's absolutely fine. All right, last but not least, with number nine, we are given the, or I'm sorry, the altitude or the height of this triangle is drawn in. That has a value of A, so we don't necessarily know 
how the height of this triangle or the altitude of this triangle. Um, but we do know that this side here for the right triangle, so not the triangle as a whole, but this side here in the right triangle has a length of 2. The hypotenuse, which is across from our right angle, this side here, has a value of 4. So this is C, this is B, we're going to go ahead and find A. So A squared plus 2 squared is 4 squared. Okay. So A squared plus 4 equals 16. Bringing 4 over to the other side, I'm going to do that through subtraction. So I get A squared equal to 12. And when I take the square root of that to undo the squared term, I end up with a that's approximately 3.5. Okay. All right. So this is how we use the Pythagorean theorem to help us find a missing side length in a right triangle when the other two side lengths are given. Okay, so just some application type problems here. Um, we're going to find the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose sides are 12 and 16. So what helps me is actually drawing a right triangle in. Don't worry about label. So with labels, I'm going to label it my way. But again, depending on what you want to label 12 and 16, depending on how you want to label the legs of this triangle, your triangle could look a little different than mine, and that's okay, as long as we recognize which values represent legs and which value represents the hypotenuse. That's the most important thing here. So we are trying to find the hypotenuse whose sides are 12 and 16. So one leg measures 12, and I'm just going to say this one does down here. It really doesn't matter. And the other leg measures 16. Okay, so we need to find C. That's our hypotenuse. All right, so if I'm going to take my side lengths, 12 squared plus 16 squared, remember we're plugging into the Pythagorean theorem here, equals our hypotenuse squared. So 12 squared gives me 144 plus 16 squared, which is 256 equals c squared. 144 plus 256, so combining those on the left side gives me 400. And to get just c, c squared is great, but we just want c. I'm going to square root both sides, and the square root of 400 is 20. So the hypotenuse has a length of All right, looking at number 11. Oops, sorry about that. Number 11. So the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 5 inches, and one leg is 4 inches. So again, I'm just going to draw my right triangle here. The hypotenuse is 5 inches. Okay, so remember, hypotenuse across from your right angle. One leg is four inches. Now, it doesn't matter which leg you want to label on your right triangle. Um, I don't know. I'm going to label this guy here. Here's one of my legs. It's four inches long. Okay. We're going to find the length of the other leg. So I'm going to call the other leg, I don't know, I'm going to call it A. You can call it B, whatever you would like, as long as we know that it represents a leg. All right. So to find leg A, I know that A squared plus B squared gives me C squared, okay? Now, technically this 4 is going to represent B, this 5 is going to represent C. So plugging in my values, remember A and B represent our legs. The legs of a right triangle create that 90 degree angle. And the longest side, which is across from the 90 degree angle, is called the hypotenuse. All right. 
So I'm bringing this 16 to the other side, I'm going to subtract, and I'm left with a squared equal to 9. And to get just a, I square root both sides, and I get a equal to 3. Okay, so the other leg, 3 inches. All right, number 12, the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 25 centimeters. If one leg is 20 centimeters, find the length of the other leg. So we know the hypotenuse, we know one leg, we're trying to find the other leg. Okay. So if I draw in a picture here, here's my right triangle, here's my right angle. The hypotenuse, which is across from the right angle, is 25 centimeters. One of the legs doesn't matter which one you want to label. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of stick with what I did before. I'm going to label the bottom. And I'm going to find the other leg. Again, you can use A, you can use B. Either one is fine. I'm going to stick with A. All right, so A squared plus b squared, so in this case, the other b, or the b value, the b leg, has a length of 20 centimeters. The hypotenuse, which is c, represents the side that has a length of 25 centimeters. All right, so a squared plus 20 squared is 400, equals 25 squared, which is 625. Getting AL by itself, you'll notice it's the same process pretty much over and over again. You just got to make sure we have all the right values in the right spots. So A squared equals 225. If I square root, A has a length of 15, and in this case, 15 centimeters. All right, two more. If the legs of a right triangle measure three and four units. Okay, so the legs measure three and four units. What is the measure of the hypotenuse? So we're trying to find the longest side. So here's my right triangle. My legs measure three and four units. Okay, here's three, here's four. We're looking for the hypotenuse, which is across from our 90, or our right angle, our 90 degree angle, which is C. Plug it in, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 9 plus 16 is c squared. 9 and 16 is 25. And to get just c, I square root both sides. So in this case, the hypotenuse five units. Okay. All right, last but not least, the hypotenuse of a right triangle measures 13. Okay, so hypotenuse is 13. One leg measures 12. What is the measure of the other leg? So drawing a picture. Here's my right angle. Hypotenuse, which is across from it, is 13. One leg measures 12. Once again, I'm just going to use A for the other leg. So A squared plus C squared equals C squared. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. I'm going to bring 144 to the other side through subtraction. That gives me A squared equal to 25, and to get just A, I square root both sides, and A ends up being 5. All right, so there is our introduction to the Pythagorean Theorem. Tomorrow we're going to do some work with applications, and we're going to be applying the Pythagorean Theorem.